Hello and welcome to Student Bug, your source for all things student life. I'm your host, Callum Denning. Coming up on today's show, we'll teach you how to make two quick and easy meals on a student budget. Then we'll hear from the indie grunge band making waves across London, it's fake swans. After that, we'll talk about the representation of student life on TV shows with four passionate TV fans. And later, we'll have a chat with some international students, see what uni in the UK is like for them. And finally, we'll give you some tips for great fashion on a budget. But first, on this week's student achievement segment, let's meet a graphic design student at Darlington College who's used his artwork to brighten up an NHS hospital. Ted Wilde, welcome to the show. Um, can you tell us about the project you did with the NHS? Yeah, they heard about me through my freelance work and they sent me a quick email just basically asking me to showcase my work. So I uh, sent them a few of my, you know, my, a few of my developments and uh, they loved it and just said, we'd love you to help us out with a feedback tree for the ward to really, um, just to help them out with that and get their idea going. You mentioned the feedback tree. What exactly is that? How did you come up with the idea for the project? Well, they come up with the idea. It's pretty much something that resembles the journey for the patients. Uh, they pretty much had an idea sorted and they just wanted me to give it that professional feel. And how long was the process from start to end? Uh, roughly about a year to get it completely designed and put it on the wall. A year? How did you keep yourself motivated and gain inspiration throughout that process? Um, well it's probably just helping, I, I knew I was helping the patients, you know, it really helping the ward give, give it that vibrant look I think. You mentioned the vibrant look. Do you believe you made an impact with your work on other people's lives, like the staff, the patients? Yeah, 100%. It was, you know, it, it was the basic white walls and a quite a bland look. So I'm, I'm glad I could get my designs and, you know, some, some visual imagery there. And what was it like to work alongside the staff and patients? And what have you taken from the experience? Uh, it was really good. There was a mutual respect between everyone, which was really nice to see. Um, there's definitely a lot of stigma around mental health um, and it was really nice to see everyone just being treated equally. Would you recommend that people get involved with their local hospital with projects like that? Yeah, 100%, definitely. What did you gain from it? Um, well, I gained skills that I could bring to my actual work in graphic design. I gained you know, a portfolio, a bit, of, you know, a bit of work from my portfolio. I gained a lot. Has it led to more work since? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, freelance work, definitely. Okay, well, thank you for sharing your experiences with us. We'll talk with Ted about what you need to do to become a successful graphic designer later on. But for now, here's two quick and easy meals that won't break the bank. Hello there. Today, we're going to show you how to make quick meals on a budget, all involving mince. Let's get cooking. First, we're making spaghetti bolognese with mince, onion, bolognese sauce. Normally, we make the sauce, but since we're students, we're still good old Don Mio. And finally, spaghetti. Begin boiling the spaghetti to make just enough for yourself, usually around 40 grams. Okay, I don't know why kettle's being used there, but I guess we'll just go with it. Turn the gas on, like so. When it starts to go floppy, push the rest into the pan and give it a good old stir. Add the chopped onion into a frying pan. When it browns, go and add the mince in as well, like so. Oh yeah, make sure you split the mince apart. Give it a good stir. Make sure the mince is completely brown. So that low the heat and add in the sauce. Give it a stir and leave it for around five minutes to simmer nicely. While it's simmering, take the spaghetti off the heat and drain it with a colander, of course. A good old shake like so. Make sure you've drained all the water out. Yeah, look at that. Shake it up. Now what you want to do, you want to plate it up like so. Look at that, the mints are going in now. Cheese is optional, but it's scrummy. So, put loads on. Next, we're making cottage pie. Oh, I love a good pie. Using mince, veg, onion, gravy granules, frozen mash, looks like bananas to me, and salt pepper to season. Begin by chopping the onion. Not like this though. Maybe use a bridge technique, nice and proper. This is, uh, I don't know what she's doing here. And then fry it with the mince until they brown. You've already seen this, so we'll speed it up because we're nice. Whilst it's cooking, make the gravy by mixing four heaped teaspoons with boiling water. Stir it so you have a smooth consistency. You don't want no lumps in your gravy, do you now? Season your meat with salt and pepper, like so. 
pour the gravy over the mint so the mint juices can flow into the gravy because you don't want to get all those lovely tasties in your good old cottage pie. Now what you want to do now is add the veg to the dish and then simmer away for a little bit longer. Then spoon the pie filling into an oven proof dish and leave it for a bit. While this is going on, get crack on your mash. Cover with cling film and pierce with a fork. Place in the microwave for two and a half minutes. Then what you want to do, you want to add some salt and butter and mix it into the mash. Nothing like dry mash. Place it back into the microwave for a further two and a half minutes. When it's done, spread the mash over the top of your pie because, you know, not a cottage pie without mash on top, is there now? And cheese on top is optional again, but advised. Place a cottage pie in the oven for around 20 minutes until the mash is crispy and golden. Voila. And look, once you've taken it out, it looks like this. Delicious. For more money saving meals, check out our website. I tell you what, that bolognese looks spectacular. I think I might know what's for dinner tonight, but enough about that because I'm getting hungry. Here with us in the studio now is the band Fake Swans with their single, Handprint. Fake Swans, that was incredible. Thank you very much. And we'll hear some more from you guys later on in the show. But first, we've got four fantastic TV students who will discuss how student life is represented on TV and what they think about it. So first of all, welcome Amy and Ollie. How are you guys today? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, Callum. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, Stephen and Alison as well. How are you guys? 
I'm good. Could be worse. I'm fine, thank you. Well, good to welcome you. Um, I'm going to start first of all with you, Amy. Um, what are your favourite TV shows or films that represent student life? Um, I would say The Breakfast Club because you have like the alternative, quirky, cool kids all together and like they're just forced to like mesh. So, yeah. Ollie? Uh, for me, it's got to be the in-betweeners. I just think it's so funny. It just reflects what I was like in school. Stephen? Uh, Fresh Meat is the one for me just because some of the characters are quite awkward and it just reminds me of, you know, the daily struggle. <laughs> you can see yourself in my yeah. life, yeah. And Alison? Uh, I really like Mean Girls. I really like the actors and I think it's very funny. The one that pops into my mind as I asked that question was Skins. Now, when that first premiered in the UK, it was extremely controversial. Um, have you guys seen it? I haven't. I've seen the first two series, um, and I think it's a dreadful representation of student life. Um, I just feel like it just doesn't really, it's, I just don't feel like it represents students enough. I just feel like it's just, it's encouraging drug use. Okay. Holly? Uh, like Stephen, I tried to get into it, but after one episode, I thought, I'm more of a light viewer, uh, so it really wasn't up my street. Amy, are you a fan? Um, yeah, I am. Like, I feel that the drug use does take away from the friendship and the bonds, and it is over glamorized, but they don't show the boring aspects it of It does reflect life. peer pressure though in student life. That's what I thought it did. It did do quite well. It reflected the peer pressure of the, like, when you've got a crowd of people doing things. We're kind of following on from that in a way. Um, how would you say your university experience differs from shows like Skins or The Secret Life of Freshers? Well, they don't put me doing my washing or shopping <laughs> or anything <laughs> like that in it, but. I don't know. I would say it does with the sort of friendships and people you meet and how you will grow and develop together. So, Alison, do you think it's an accurate representation of your university life or can you think of another show that is more so? Mm, I can't really think of a show, <coughs> but I know which doesn't represent student life, which um, I would say is Project X, because I don't think that most students like throw house parties where they accept the fact that the house may be burned down or go up in fire. <laughs> Ollie, kind of on that topic, how do you feel American shows that portray student life differ from British ones? Uh, well, obviously, I think the main difference is in America you have to be 21 to drink. So over here, uh, you come to uni 18 years old, you're already able to drink. So America, a lot of the TV shows glamorise the aspect of, oh, you have a fake ID, you can go in illegally buy booze, and then you have to get drunk at a house party. Here, you can go clubbing, whatever. And I think that's the, ma the major difference between the two. Stephen, very quickly, can you think of any American shows that differ from their British counterparts? Uh, yes, I think uh, One Tree Hill difference, differences from the um, British counterparts just because, again, it glamorises the whole fake ID aspect that Ollie just said. And I just feel like, because they can't drink to a later age, I feel like they're a lot more focused on their coursework. Um, but obviously, again, they can't really show that in TV shows because it would be quite boring to show someone writing an essay. Okay, well it's good to get your thoughts on how student life is represented in the media. Some very, very interesting opinions and thank you for joining us today. But up next, we're going to have a discussion with international students about what uni life in the UK is like for them. So Jennifer, Wei Sheen, welcome to the show. Um, you two are both international students, so I believe you both can relate to the little clip we've just seen. It can be pretty daunting moving to a new country and starting uni and a whole life uh, here. So that makes me wonder, first of all, you, Jennifer, why the UK? Why the UK? That's a very good question. Um, it's a mandatory semester abroad for me, so I got to choose a couple of, of, uh, a couple of locations. And uh, when I looked this university up, it has had a very good reputation and also, I've never been to London before, so yeah, I wanted to go there. Why she? Um, because when I was studying in China, I'm, I was so sick of the Chinese educational mode. I, I think it was, it was so boring, so I decided to study abroad. And then, uh, because I'm obsessed with British accent, and that's why I chose UK. Okay. Uh, how hard was it for you to adapt to life and study over here, and what was the hardest part? Um, it wasn't that hard for me because, you know, there are a lot of Chinese students here and we can help each other to get it through. 
and the hardest part for me is the language you know because the english is not my first language and sometimes i just can't get the joke what british people say it sounds like you've been listening to some of my jokes uh jennifer <laughs> you're from the same continent um but is life in the uk different from what you expected before moving here well uh, i have to say it, i didn't have that many expectations before i came here because i wanted to be as open-minded as possible and um what I expected it to be like, um, well, there are very nice students that I met so far. So I w I'm glad that I, I got to meet some great new people. So it was, since I didn't have any expectations, I'd say, well, it was not different then. Okay. And uh, Wei Xin, what are you gaining from this experience that you can benefit from in the future and might convince other people to study abroad? Well, um, in UK, I have known uh, different people from different backgrounds. And I think their story are very interesting for me. And besides, because I live far away from my home, so I think I'll become more independent. Um, Jennifer, what are some of the advantages you think you have compared to British students? And what are some of the disadvantages? Well, um, the advantages would probably be that I got a different way of approaching, maybe. Mm -hmm. Because we're Germans, we're said to be very efficient and direct, which I actually found to be true that we appear direct. Um, that can both be an advantage and a disadvantage, of course. But yeah, it's, it's just a different way of thinking, maybe you're approaching things differently. Uh, Wei Xin, you mentioned you're a big fan of the British accents in particular, but not particularly our style of humour. Can you imagine <laughs> yourself after the experience staying and settling in the UK? Well, I'm trying to stay in UK. I'm, I'm doing an intern in an entertainment company. So I, because I like the, the culture atmosphere here, so, well, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what advice would you give to new international students who are thinking about coming to study in the UK? Well, my advice is to just go out and make some friends and do not spend most of your time in the library and in the shopping malls and go to the museums, go to the exhibitions and experience the, di the culture difference. It's yeah. all about keeping that balance, right? And uh, how about you, Jennifer? What advice would you give to prospective students? Well, I would probably say don't be shy, don't be oh. afraid of making contact because you're thrown into the cold water. So you gain a lot of self-confidence if you give yourself the chance to. And would you consider staying in the UK? Well, probably for working, yes. But I sort of miss home and I, I know that I always return at some point, but for a couple of years, maybe. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's good to speak to you both, but up next we've got some recommendations on where and how to shop to still look good while shopping on a student budget. Hello and welcome, my name is Mia and today I'm going to be showing you some of the fashion items that I have found on the best bargain website. Now as you can see I have some products behind me and I'm also wearing some of the products. They are from three different sites that I'm going to mainly focus on today. So let's start with unboxing the ones that I haven't opened yet. So first of all we're going to start with this box. We have these gorgeous little white pom-pom stiletto shoes. They're really, really fun shoes. And guess how much these were, ladies and gentlemen? Five pounds. Everything5pounds.com is the website we're focusing on first. They have the best stuff. I always go on there. Carrying on with shoes, I live in these. They're a square toe, ankle boot, they're patent, and they look like you'd buy them from Topshop or River Island for £55 when you've got them for £5. Pounds, so. Bargain! I've got these lovely, lovely little flats. They're actually super, super comfy. Praise to the everything five pound gods. Moving on to clothes, these amazing olive green velvet wide leg trousers. Wide legs are in massively at the moment. That's everything from fivepounds.com. Now moving on to my second website, I am showing you two of the tops that I've got from romney.com. I'm gonna start off with this top. It is a ribbed texture, hand-stitched floral print. Floral embellishment is in at the moment also massively. They literally got everything on there. You'd probably find what you wanted to buy in the high street stores and more. It goes those are the trousers that I also have, which are from eBay, which I'll talk a little bit more later on. And then we have this second top. It says, I'm a happy-go-lucky ray of effing sunshine. I quite like my comical slogan tees. That is everything I have for you guys today. Make sure you check eBay, 
wrong way and everything five pounds dot com students be smart with your money but look good at the same time thank you mia and now fake swans are back with another excellent hit it's mothers take it away Thank you, Fake Swans. And now, as promised, we're back with Ted to learn how to become a successful graphic designer and what you need for starting out. Uh, welcome back, Ted. Uh, can you show us firstly the basic things you need for graphic design in general? Yeah, 100% you need to download Photoshop and Illustrator. So I've got, uh, this is Illustrator up here, and then that's Photoshop. What these two pretty much do is give you uh, the platform to just completely get that professional look you need for every design. So those are the pieces of software you need, but what other tips would you give to students who want to start out in graphic design? Definitely just draw down any idea you have. 100% everything, even if you do a page, just look something like that. Okay, have you got, can you explain uh, what you're gonna do with a couple of those ideas? Well, these are just like quick developments. Um, I've actually got some of the trees in here. So like these are some of the first ideas for trees I had for the NHS project that I did. And then you just scan them in to Illustrator and uh, play around with it, and then usually you get your development. So the sketchbook is definitely the starting point for the people to then take forward? 100%. Okay, are there any personality traits that might be required? Uh, you've got to take a lot of criticism, definitely be able to take a lot of criticism, because you could spend months and months and months on something, and then it gets back to someone and they just go, oh, I don't like that. Well, thank you very much, Ted. That was very useful. But that is all for today's show. Next week, we'll be back with more hot topics and tips on student life. But until then, we'll see you next time.